There are some people that came to the ways of the Lord because they knew a healing God. My family knew a healing God. Mom was dying of cancer. She had intestinal polyps, womb cancer, breast cancer. And she was about to die, but God intervened. We knew God the healer. Mom is more than 80 years old and lives up to this day. <laughs> she didn't die. Others know a prosperous God, a God that, through a biblical principle, begins to prosper them. But there's a facet of God, not less important than the Bible mentions in the book of Exodus 34, 14. You won't see many preachers talk about this facet of God. You will on God the healer, the prosperity God, the God of peace. But Exodus 34, 14, the Bible narrates or shows a facet of God that we've never heard before. It says, do not worship any other God for the Lord, whose name is Jealous. Can you repeat that with me? Say, how is God? Jealous. Oh, yes. God is a jealous God. It's a facet of God. It's hard to understand this point of view that God is jealous. The Bible says in James 4, 5, or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns us jealously. He jealously yearns for us. What does it mean that he jealously yearns for us? It means that when we say we are with him, but during the week we have impure thoughts or things that don't please him, he feels we're being unfaithful to him. In fact, the Bible says, O oh, you adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world is hatred toward God? Anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. You must love me alone, says God. You cannot serve the Lord because he is a jealous God. If you serve other gods, he will consume you. I am a jealous God. I want you only for me. I want your eyes to be purified only for me. I don't want you to be afraid of me. I want you to fear me. It's the fear that God gives. It's the spirit of the fear of the Lord. What makes us not sin? What makes us not commit mistakes? To not lie, but always say the truth. Listen to this lamentation. This is the Lord who says this. Oh, that their hearts would be inclined to fear me and keep all my commands so that it might go well for your children. It's God who grieves. He says in Deuteronomy 5.29, Oh, that you would fear me. Now, I'll tell you a secret. You'll hear me say, receive the Holy Spirit. You must have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not for you to talk in tongues, necessarily. It's not to shake or um, feel the chills or heat. To have the Holy Spirit is to count with an advantage to not sin, to do things right. When the Holy Spirit baptizes you, you have a dosage. It's like an armor. You receive like a double dosage of spiritual protection. He gives you discernment so that you won't commit mistakes. Only through the Holy Spirit comes the spirit of the fear of the Lord. The Bible says in Isaiah that when the presence of God is absent, fear is hardened. You lose the fear of God. You don't have the fear of God. You lose the fear of God. I know someone is thinking right now, listen, pastor, the God of the Old Testament is the God of fear. The God of the New Testament is the God of love. But both testaments have the same dosage of love and fear. In fact, it was Jesus who said, I tell you, do not be afraid of those who kill the body. And after that, they can do no more. But I will show you whom you should fear. Not to those who can give death, but after death. You have to fear the one who after death can throw you into hell. Oh, yes, I tell you, fear him. Jesus said that. 
There's only one who can throw you into hell. Only one. The devil can't throw you into hell. Only one has the power to throw you into hell. And he said, fear him, Jesus said. Ananias and Sapphira was a couple that lied. They lied to the apostles and they committed the error of lying to the apostles in the days of the Holy Spirit manifestation. The Holy Spirit was manifesting. The glory was there and they lied. And when they lied, they fell dead. And Peter said, I want you to know that you cannot lie to the Holy Spirit. And the church was consolidating because they lived in the fear of the Lord. They lived in the fear of the Lord. Are you listening to me? Say amen. Now, this is the point, ladies and gentlemen. Why did I name this sermon the God of the Three Links? Because every time God touches a person, and I'll prove it right now, as a consequence, you'll make sure that your children will be touched and your grandchildren as well. The three generational links. Always. God is the God of Abraham, grandfather. The God of Isaac, father. The God of Jacob, son. Every time that God touches, he touches at least three generations. Now, you know how. How can you make sure that your children will have the fear of a jealous God. How can you know your children will fall into drugs? How can you be sure of what sites they are navigating through the internet during the week? What text messages are they sending? How can you make sure that your daughter will keep her virginity until marriage? How can you be sure that your son won't ask to have sex? What can you teach a son when he sees that his father has no fear of God? Because what gets recorded in your mind is the fact that your father had the fear of God or not. Psalms 34, 11 says, Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. One generational link is not enough for God to fulfill his purpose. God needs father, sons, and grandsons. The Bible says, You have taught me from my youth. And even when I am old and gray, do not forsake me, O God, until I declare your strength to this generation, your power to all those who are to come. How can you show God's power to those who are yet to come? This is the secret. If I do my job right, and the word that I'm transmitting is the word of God, and the Holy Spirit does His part good and we work together as a team and He gives you the spirit of the fear of the Lord, that fear of the Lord will stay in your home, in your things, in your business, in whatever you do, and your children will observe it. Your son maybe doesn't come to church here, but he'll observe a dad that has a fear of God, a mom that fears to be unfaithful to God, and that will be forged in their minds. And they will teach that to their children. In other words, your grandchildren. As a consequence, people, I just preached to those who are yet to be born. I just did it in this very moment. That's what the Bible says. Are you with me? Yes or no? Wow. You might say, well, you can preach on video. And in the future, my grandchildren will see you on a video. It's not the same. They'll just listen to a preacher. Blah, 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 blah. They'll listen to what's heard at home. There's something in the life of a grandfather, father and son, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Surely, Jacob, in certain occasion, he was protesting to his father-in-law and he said this, If the God of my father had not been with me, the God of my grandfather Abraham and the God whom my father Isaac feared, you would surely have sent me away empty-handed. That's how Jacob once stated in a certain occasion. If I had not feared the God of my grandfather Abraham and the God that my father Isaac had greatly feared, man, things would have gone wrong. What a great job did Abraham do in such a way that three generations remembered the fear that their grandfather had.
Then further on, it says that Jacob took an oath in the name of the God who his father Isaac feared. How did Isaac live to record in the mind of his son the paradigm of a father fearful of God? How did he live? Because it was a testimony of his father that was like a brush that painted in the mind of Jacob the prototype of a patriarch that trembled in the fear before the presence of God. The fear of his father recorded in the mind of his son a testimony that would last for generations. Brian, my oldest son, says he's going to be a Hollywood movie director. He is going to direct movies. I don't know if he's going to accomplish it or not. But just to think that he can be in the movie industry and film a movie that will be transmitted in thousands of languages around the world and that in the movie he would show the fear of the Lord that he saw in his father and that movie would affect millions and millions makes me think that when I have to die, they'll say, like David, this man served his generation and as a consequence affected those who are yet to be born and those who are yet to come. How many want to say amen, amen? It's a God of three links. Father, son, and grandson. It's a link, a chain that's connected to three links that cannot break. Why? Because you receive a word and you transmit it. Because you receive fear and you transmit it, aware or unaware of it. Because they see the way you are when it comes to give your tithe, your offering to come early to church. But if your son never sees you read the Bible in the week, he never sees you have a private devotional during the week. He never hears you say something like, wow, let's not lose the presence of God. If your son only sees you pray for the food, if he really sees you, <laughs> because praying for food isn't, Lord Jesus, bless this pizza, oh, man, no, it's not that. It's to pray to give thanks. He'll have the fear of a jealous God. He'll never stop going to church. It doesn't even cross his mind. It doesn't cross it. It doesn't cross his mind to stop congregating. No, no. Because I've seen my dad, how he loved God, and that will be transmitted to his grandson. About a year and a half ago, I preached a sermon similar to this one. And I shared with you something that a preacher once told me. He said that the way we have of seeing God has lots to do with the family that we're raised in. And he says that there are families that can be identified with different colors. One is a red light family. If you were raised in a red light family, I'm speaking to those about the fathers that always say, no, you can't do that. And due to any minor mistake, you were punished. Your father always waited a lot from you and he always demanded too much. So you were always afraid of things like, watch it, Dot's taking a nap. Don't get mal upset because she'll go crazy. That's a red light family. And you go through life, you become an adult, and you're scared. You're afraid of mom and dad, and it's transmitted to God. So then you see God like a God that's waiting to punish you. You don't fear the Lord, you're afraid of God. You're afraid he's going to be like your father. And I know believers that say to me, hmm, the other day I had a bad thought. I only hope not to crash on the streets now. The other day I screamed at my mother-in-law, I just wish I don't get fired from work. You're afraid that God's going to punish you because you were raised in a red light family. Then there's a green light family. This is a family that's raised and they let you do everything. You could watch television as late as you wanted, eat at any time. You could say to your mom, I don't like this food. Oh, my little boy, should I buy you in and out That's a green light family. Go on. You can do anything. Generally, the children that are raised in a green light home are generally, I'm not saying everyone, sons of divorced parents or separated. Where due to the guilt that they have, they try to give their child everything so that the child feels more comfortable with me than with his mother or vice versa.
So the child speculates with that, and he goes to his mom's house, and he says, Dad bought me a video game. I can too. That jerk isn't the only one who can do this. I can also buy you one. He never has rules. If the child feels bad with mom, he says, I'll go with dad, who is never asking me to clean the table. But son, you don't have to clean the table here either. And so they fight for him. And in the midst of a ridiculous adult fight, there's a victim living in a green light house. I'll do what I want, when I want, I have no schedules, I face no consequences, I'll do what I want, I'm always a champ. But you're doing something worse than just raising a thief. You're sending off to the world an adult that will never have the fear of the Lord. So, just like the red light children go out afraid of God, and generally they go to legalistic churches, there are people who love being in legalistic churches. They love it when people say, hmm, sister, you cut your hair. Sister, you have makeup on. What's that earring? Take it off. Yes, they love it. Because they come from a red light family. And because the red light is like that, the green light is, I'll do what I want. Hey. And they face life with no fear of the Lord. One day, they become youth leaders, and someone will say to them, I feel like having sex, and he'll say, use a condom. Why? Because all his life, they let him do whatever he wanted. Once a mother said to me, I prefer for my... Listen, this is true, like everything I'm saying, but I just have to make it clear that this is true because it sounds like a joke. My mother said to me, I'd prefer for my daughter to have sex with her boyfriend in her room than to know that she might be in a car or in a cheap hotel somewhere. <laughs> so, the kid came in. Hey, what's up, mother-in-law? I'm headed towards the room. Don't interrupt me. And he would go in. And the mom said, oh, let me know if you need anything. That way, I won't lose my daughter. You already lost her. <laughs> That girl will never have the fear of the Lord. Never. Because she doesn't fear her parents. Because she has no fear of consequences. She doesn't fear anything. And she'll go through life thinking, I'll go to a church where no one requires anything. I'll give my tithe and no one bother me. I can live in adultery, fornication. They have a God of green light. But also, you might come from a black light family. Where your parents were never there. Your mom either. You were raised by a tutor, an aunt, or what's even worse. They were there, but it's like they never existed. They were absent. And you needed care and attention. And then you start to think that God, you're also indifferent to God. And then you say, you know what? I felt lonely ever since. I felt lonely. Life has those things. Life has those ups and downs. I won't be so clumsy to try to explain the reasons why, because I will never understand your pain, but I can say this to you. The problem isn't that you had pain due to a death. The problem is that you think that God forsake you, that God died a little when your father left. That God abandoned you the day your father packed his luggage and took off leaving your mom for a younger woman. That's the problem. God didn't abandon you. Your father was not a man. Your father did not have what it takes to be a man, to stay at your side and at your mother's side. But that's not God. God does not forsake you. He will never abandon you. And you face life when you had a black light family thinking, when is God going to leave me? Never. I will be with you every day of your life until the end of the world. I will be with you. 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 Hallelujah. And then there are the green light families. You've had a dosage of fear of God, a dosage of discipline. They said to you, son, if you do this, you'll pay a consequence. If you do that, if you don't give in your homework, you'll have bad grades. And if you have bad grades, you won't watch television for a whole month. That is not a red light family that screams at you. That's a family that knows how to discipline. 
Son, at dinner time, all of you must be around the dinner table and disconnected from electronics. I don't want children with iPads or kids with cell phones on the dinner table because your son can be at your table sending text messages with someone else and he's not even there. He's just lending his body, but he's not there. Observe any car in a freeway. Observe any family and you'll see their children in the backseat with a cable coming out of their ear. They're not even sharing the trip with their parents. They're listening to music. And then those same parents will ask themselves why did their son take a gun and kill 20 kids at school? Oh, there's a demon in the United States. No, the demon was at your home. Seated next to your son while he was listening to music and ignoring his father. Being disconnected, people, will make your children never fear the Lord. Your grandchildren will not have it either. And we lost our time. Be connected to your children. You won't be popular. I'm not popular sometimes with my son, my oldest son. Sometimes I'm not popular with a son that follows. I'm not popular. The youth make lines to hear me preach. And sometimes some of my children might feel like saying, Oh, Dad, but I'm not going to be held accountable for those teenagers, but those I have at home. So then I'll say to them, these are the consequences. If you stay up late, the next day you can't get up. So then you'll go to bed earlier today. They won't go upstairs congratulating me. They'll go, Ugh. But I have to be sure that they have the fear of the consequences. That's not being afraid. That's having fear. And if they have that holy fear, then they'll have fear of God. And even if they bump into a youth leader that advises them to use a condom, they will not drop their pants or go to bed with another woman that's not their wife, not because they're afraid that dad might find out, not because a youth leader will see them, but because they'll say, in the fear of God that I learned from my dad, because of the God that he respects, I will not sin with my body. How many want this? Say amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! <laughs> I'm tired of receiving emails from parents saying, how can I make sure my son doesn't buy those baggy pants where you can even see their underwear? Because now there's some pants so baggy that you can see their underwear and it says Spider-Man or I don't know what it says. And they want to take them to church. Others say, my son wants to pierce his nose. My daughter wants a tattoo of a snake that reaches to her neck and fights with the sheep, and there's a dragon. What can I do? I don't have answers for that. What you can do is change the paradigm of your home. You have to know that God is a God of three links, at least. The God that blesses the Father. With the Holy Spirit comes the spirit of fear. And with that spirit of fear, you have to live. Your son will see it, and he will never ask for those ridiculous things. Because he'll say, like Jacob, by the God of my grandfather Abraham, and the God that my father Isaac feared, I will be faithful to that God, to that Lord. How many want this? Say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. El favor de Dios en este lugar